When you need mealtime inspiration, it's worth shopping Kroger, where you'll find over 30,000 mouth-watering choices that excite your inner foodie. And no matter what tasty choice you make, you'll enjoy our everyday low prices, plus extra ways to save, like digital coupons worth over $600 each week. You can also save up to $1 off per gallon at the pump with fuel points. More savings and more inspiring flavors make shopping Kroger worth it every time. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Fuel restrictions apply. This is Amy Poehler. My new movie, Disney and Pixar's Inside Out 2, is coming to theaters June 14th. And it's making me feel joy and sadness and anger. Definitely some disgust. Rose! And I think a little fear. Really? But I'm also feeling these new emotions like anxiety, embarrassment, envy, and ennui. It's what you call the boredom. Okay, that one was weird. It's going to be the feel-everything movie of the summer. Disney and Pixar's Inside Out 2, only in theaters June 14. Get tickets now. Join this energetic and ambitious trio who are empowering everyday women through their stories. They met as young, driven sales girls in their 20s and experienced all the excitement of early career success. Years later, life happened. They found themselves at new companies still striving for progress in it all. Career, families, and faith. They've all felt stuck or uninspired at times, but they've never stopped moving. Get ready for candid conversations, inspiring stories, and their big life lessons as they share it all. The good, the bad, and the funny. Welcome to Lead Like a Girl. Um. Welcome. Welcome back to Lead Like a Girl. We are excited to continue our conversation. I know our last episode, we talked a little bit about Jamie, Coraline, myself, our career journey. We got to hear some great stories. I learned some new things about Jamie and her job wearing a little hot pink bikini. You're so I, good yeah, at holding I, a I numbers that. Me. I, I didn't even know guys... this was a skill set of yours. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, I'm sorry, but weren't you in the red bikini? No, I was not in a hot oh, pink bikini. I'm sorry. I was in a coral yes, bikini. Yes, yes. Much different. And <laughs> much I also, um, <laughs> much, much different. So today <laughs> we are going to reminisce a little more about our previous life. I always say my previous life because it does seem like an entire lifetime ago. I don't know about you girls, but it feels like forever ago. So I say DB, you guys all know. Um, the what company I'm talking about when I say DB, it's easier for me to just say that th- than the company. So we're going to reminisce a little bit about our life at DB. And I want to start off, of course, doing what we love to do here at Lead Like a Girl, and that is tell stories. So my icebreaker for today, ladies, is I want to know about, and and you guys could uh, Corlin, that smiles and make me call <laughs> on you be first. Ready. So, Corlin, um, I I want to start off by tell me about your most memorable moment in all of your career at All DB. right. So, I don't know if this is the absolute number one, but this was a very signature moment in my life at the company. And it's 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 memorable for two parts, which I'll get into here. But so one thing to preface is, is that our company had amazing conferences. It was something that we looked forward to. It was our award session. They planned all these different things. I think at some point we had Hootie and the Bullfish come sing for us. And it was just off the cuff. We did such a great day. It was so fun. So this is picture. It's my second year here. I had just come off the high of Jamie and I were uh, number, what, number four, number five directors, and they launched this conference and they started talking about the end of the conference party that was a costume theme. And it was come dressed as your favorite or as a celebrity. Yeah. And so... (laughs) <laughs> Jamie, I know. Oh but you know what Corlin is no like, I I'm gonna pee myself right now because this is yeah and I think I peed myself okay, that so day I got, okay I'm, I got it. this is so good oh, I do oh I my have gosh a, I don't have, have, to have a picture me, we'll have, have to, to figure have it out but okay so I'm gonna try to try to stay as brief as I can because we're on a time crunch but it is so hilarious so I'm just gonna say I just was room I was trying to come up with a really funny thing something and you know I did I already told you I'm competitive so I want to win and so 
I had contacted one of our friends who lived at, who worked at the Texas location. I'm like, we need to do something funny. And so my idea was let's go as WWF wrestlers. I had got my hands on a bald cap on clearance at the costume shop at the mall of America. And I'm like, I got to do something with it. I never knew how much you actually I know, looked right? like him. And so <laughs> I went all out. So you got to picture this. So the first thing that was insane about this is that I had red tights, red oh. boots, a fake muscle suit. And my roommate at the time was a hairstylist. And so she got me blonde, uh, fake hair so I could go all out as Hulk Hogan, right? So I did went like made my shirt a yellow <laughs> Hulkamania shirt. So fast forward, so we're getting ready for this. And Jamie, <laughs> I'm and Jamie's dressed up. What are you, Laura Croft? So she's like this hot fighter. Like she looks super hot. And yeah, just amazing. <laughs> Yeah, just totally I have like a machete gorgeous. taped to my leg. And I <laughs> am yelling at her from our bathroom. I'm like, Jamie, you got to come help me put my mustache on. <laughs> I need you guys. No, this is a oh true story. God. I need you guys to picture Corlin. Corlin, if take your hair I back because I remember you had hair. It was bald, a bald yeah. wig. And then your hair was like, come. it came down like this. I seriously, with the mustache, I never knew that you looked like Oh my like gosh. Him. Like, so you it was, have so to we look were like, like, like that peeing our pants did. laughing. Trying, and I had like a bald cap on. We fake glued like a, mm -hmm. like a I don't know, kind of business in the, like bald in the front, a skullet, right? Bald on the top, blonde hair yeah. in the background. She glued on the mustache on my face. And so I am coming down ready to roll. Hilarious. It was just so funny. Well, so then I am assuming my buddy is going to come down. He was going to dress up like Captain Lou Albano, which if you don't know WWF wrestling, he was like a dude in the background or a do like a good wrestler or whatever <sighs> anyways i walk down and i am dressed up like a complete idiot thinking i'm gonna go find my partner and we're sitting in the lobby so and the elevator opens up and this dude comes out dressed like john travolta from pulp fiction the absolute opposite <laughs> of <laughs> of WWF wrestler and I just look at him and I just thought oh my goodness so I had I had a decision to make am I gonna own am I just gonna go back up to my hotel room or am I gonna own this stuff and I just I just did the second I just owned my Hulk Hogan and all the best that I could right I did she did and go down get interviewed by like a Joan Rivers impersonator and just ended up just just I don't know, just being an, an idiot for the whole thing. And the highlight yeah. is, is did you, who I won the you costume won. contest? This girl. I did. Yes, I did. She did. Yeah, she did. <laughs> wait, wait. What about the... Uh... <laughs> did you do Millie I'm sorry, Vanilli but I remember when to that. We did Mini Millie Vanilli. We... <laughs> yeah. Oh, that was me. Yeah, I, I forgot. I was going to ask, who did you do that with? That's funny. Yeah, because I'm not the costume I was, type. I was going to say... Like when, uh, how mad were you when you dressed up that one year and went all out and me and um, Krista right. <laughs> went as flamingos and it was won. Okay. And I was like, I made yeah. this costume no, up great. 10 I minutes know. ago. I, I think a little bit the thrill of the excitement leading up to it. But that was, that was so fun. I've got some, cost so I've got some costume victories under my belt. That, that was wasn't so the only great. one, but that was definitely the best. Oh, for real. Yeah. No, was, I remember that so she good. did take that it's very so seriously. I everybody that knows me, I do not do the Halloween, the costumes, not my thing. Um, but Corlin took that seriously, and that was a that was a really good costume. And um, yeah, that was I awesome. about that. Thank you. You're for welcome for that one. Me. Um, Jamie, do you have one, or do you want me to go? We can do it either way. Mine's. Easy. You can go. I think most of mine are just um, funny experiences I had with the variety of people who came into the showroom. So you go ahead. You go first. So mine is, and I think I've shared uh, this one before. So mine is when I started my first conference that I went to, I think it was in Phoenix. And I remember, I think her name was Lee Grimaldi, if I'm remembering correctly. And I remember her winning the number one director of the year and I remember her speech and I remember her talking about how she hand wrote on every envelope every mail out that she sent out she hand wrote their name on the front of the envelope 
and I was taking notes. And by the way, from that day on, every mail out that ever left that showroom had a handwritten. Mm -hmm. That was just part of what everyone did, not just myself. But I remember that. It's funny how I remember things. I forgot about that, but we totally did that too. I think I learned it from you probably. Again, following following the people that know what they're doing, 100%. Yes. And I remember having pages of notes when she did her speech, because a big part of her speech was talking about how she stood out, what made her different, the things that she did. And so I've always been the queen of plagiarism. Like, I'm not going to reinvent the wheel. Someone's already done the work. They've proven something to something to work. I'm going to take notes and then repeat it. And again, it's done. So anyway, so that day I was and I hadn't even become a director yet. I wasn't, I was still um, a, a lead generated telemarketer. And I remember after that, I made myself a promise. Not only was I going to become a director, um, but I was going to be number one. And so fast forward, we're at this conference. And I remember when I had to say the speech, of course, my speech had to be um, proofread by seven levels um, all the way up to Mark. Uh, you to missed sure a detail. You didn't like even F-bomb say it. So you hit your speech. goal and you won number one director, right? You just did. You kind of skated over that. But that is yes. a big deal. OK, so yes, <laughs> thousands of people. So There's a thousand am... people probably like she did it. <laughs> and, and and I and as a matter of fact, I did it twice. But this particular year, I was so excited and I wrote my speech and um. I got up there and there was, I I forget how many people, but it was a lot. And I wasn't nervous until someone told me how many people were in the audience. And then I was like, oh, great. I'm just a little nervous now. So I say the speech. And as soon as I started speaking, you know, of course, the nervousness went away. But the best part was when I got down to my seat. And I want to say it was, um, what were their names? Uh, Nishad and I can't remember her husband's name. Rob, thank you. When I got to my seat, her husband, Rob, he was like, I just witnessed the cutest thing ever. And I was like, what? And he goes, so your son, Jonathan, at the time was, I don't know, I want to say he was maybe like 10, maybe 11. He goes, he didn't know that anyone was was in the bathroom and he was in the bathroom and he was pretending like he was the announcer. (laughs) And he's in the mirror and he's got this tuxedo on and he's like, and the number one director of the year from DV Chicago, Jessica Manning. That is adorable. And he's doing this whole thing. (laughs) And he's like, and the guy's like, when he came out of the stall and he goes, and he saw my face, he was like, oh. I didn't know no one was in her. He was like, no, man. He goes, I high-fived him. He goes, and I told him, your mom is, she's killer. She's great. I know her. I love her. And he was like, oh, thanks. And so, yeah, so that was not the speech. It wasn't that. It was that afterwards. And I was just imagining this kid in the bathroom doing that. So that's my most memorable in my 18 years memory. That's of a good one. DB. That's a good one. I remember that speech. Actually, I was so proud I of you. That. I was like, that isn't that's my friend up there. And so I was just happy to be in your in your circle a little bit. <laughs> Listen, I don't remember that speech. You're wearing a green dress. I remember no that. GPT. Green dress. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember the dress. What? <laughs> but but I remember that even the, the speech went through three levels of yep. approval. Well, well, well we know why. What's really coming out of this girl changed. from Chicago's mouth? Like, let's be right. honest. <laughs> <laughs> right. And, 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 and there wasn't many edits. So I was That's proud great. about that. And I was like, what? What the hell you think I'm gonna say? <laughs> Seriously, uh, but anyway, it was it was good times. Um, Jamie, what you got? I <clears throat> I just I re okay. <laughs> I'm gonna back up that whole sentence right there. Um, the <laughs> the thing that I remember honestly the most about, I mean, I, there are many things. Don't get me wrong, but tell me about a time. One thing I often bring up. Yeah, I know. One thing that I often bring up is the fact that the people who would come in for so just to put a little background, we Mm -hmm. had a we met someone new every day. Right. So we invited people in. So every single day you had no idea 
who you were meeting with. It could be a married couple. It could be a single person. It could be all different um, professions. Anything. I mean, oh, literally, literally be, any yeah. position at like any job. Yes, exactly. So every walk of life, right? And so you you really didn't have an idea of like who you would meet when they came in. Um, and so one thing that I often tell people is, I think a huge skill that I learned from working for the company was to be able to be sort of a chameleon in terms of anybody who walks, anybody I meet, it could be an engineer, it could be a teacher, it could be, it doesn't matter, a millionaire, someone who's on welfare, it does yeah. not matter. It could be anything. Um and I and I that job taught me how to connect with every single type of person. So um, I had a guy I one say, time. I'm going to pull a, a story out of you because I know in. you got a. I got a. I had oh, a guy. I got. I got a couple. <laughs> I had one guy who came in. Um, who <laughs> he came in with his mother. Who um, that? <laughs> he did end up joining. Uh, uh, me i'm sure you had a probably you had a sell that one like trust he me came, he one. showed up with his mom <laughs> right 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 no no no. he's right. gonna join he did join he worked for he waste management and at the time i didn't know what waste management he joined as a single oh. man but he did show up with his mother and we did let him in he worked for waste management i didn't know at the time what that meant so now <laughs> i know that he drove a garbage truck like yeah, i didn't good, know good for what you that for was. managing I was like, your waste oh, that's so exciting what is what do you you know <laughs> <laughs> he um later came in and asked me on a date and while he was asking me on the date he was what? bleeding from his eye he had a he had a what? he had a drop of what? blood coming out of his eye while he was asking me on a date that isn't even wait, my wait, story wait. but no, okay no, no, no. I, I had another gentleman more deep into that <laughs> did is this after he joined I, yeah no he and joined when, this, when did and his he came back in you know <clears throat> It was, he came in like a couple of weeks later um, to just to ask me oh, on a date. And okay. when he was asking okay. me on the date, he so was bleeding he, out wow. of his eye. I've never experienced that since. I did hand him a tissue in case you were wondering. I was like, <laughs> I, I think you up? get a little something right here. Um, there, <laughs> he was crying. Blood uh, there was another gentleman who came in one time who introduced me to the mouse that he had in his pocket of his shirt. So he had a button up <laughs> shirt on and there was a mouse That's in his pocket. And wait, he wait, was wait. like, this is a true oh, story, my friend's Jessica. in my pocket. That's true. What? Wait, a real mouse? <laughs> this is a true story. An actual mouse. He's like, oh, my friend is in my pocket. Like, and I'm like gross, thinking, probably. okay, you're funny. <laughs> like, oh, okay, what's your friend? No, there's like, a mouse in there. Mouse? Um, yeah. yeah. Did the mouse, a mouse. join? A mouse. <laughs> That's a no. <laughs> I oh my remember. god! I need to know if the mouse man no. joined. And did you put the mouse on the membership? <laughs> oh my goodness! It's like you can't. You honestly, it's like goes back to like you can't make these things up. Like this just literally this happened. Um, <laughs> third encounter. My boss, so the 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 franchise owner, very funny, very funny person. He um. Gosh, I think it was on a Monday. So on Monday nights, we didn't actually have like a presentation, but we did have to come in. And so typically you were dressed like pretty casually like on Monday nights. So um, I think I, <laughs> for whatever reason, might must have had the, <laughs> the best outfit on or something on that Monday night. Because um, if you were dressed decent and someone showed up, you were like, okay, you're up. You got oh, so you know, to walk in. So he comes in on a prepared not purse. dress yeah. night. Nice. Okay, go yeah. ahead. Yeah, so someone who was not supposed to be there and you're not really nothing's happened there's no presentation going on so we would call it walking them so you would walk you would have to essentially I'm going to just say it because kick them we out. were like a you private like we're not doing it today. Did you so guys you write walk, walk on the Did you write that on the log? I'm just curious. So when you guys had your log, did you have like secret things like we had DTR? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Hey, it's Kaylee Cuoco for Priceline. Ready to go to your happy place for a happy price? Well, why didn't you say so? Just download the Priceline app right now and save up to 60% on hotels. So whether it's Cousin Kevin's Kazoo concert in Kansas City, go Kevin! Or Becky's Bachelorette Bash in Bermuda. You never have to miss a trip ever again. So download the Priceline app today. Your savings are waiting. Go to your happy place for a happy price. Go to your happy price. Priceline. At Evernorth Health Services, we believe costs shouldn't get in the way of life-changing care. And we're doing everything in our power to make it possible. 
behavioral health solutions that also keep your projections at their best? It's possible. Pharmacy benefits that benefit your bottom line? It's possible. Complex specialty care that cares about your ROI? It's possible. Because we're already doing it. All while saving businesses billions. That's wonder made possible. Learn more at evernorth.com slash wonder. We had, oh. we had um, Teeth Factor. Probably not. Old Factor. <laughs> and all PC. Wait, but what, so what would you write? <laughs> so what, what, what happened write? with the guy? What happened with Just the walk-in curious. guy? We're, we're I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So let me finish. Let me finish my walking story. So um, my boss comes out and he's la- he's kind of red and he's a little snickering. Right. And he's like, um, so somebody is- I need you to <laughs> walk someone. And I was like, oh, you know, I got to walk a yeah. meeting. I got to put him out. Like, Just kick reschedule. Him out. So I go out, out to the showroom. Just let him and he's down nicely. Oh, yeah. OK. I'm just ah, well, this. So I go out. He's um look, Carla. All I see is a cloak. You know what a cloak out. is? Yes, we did. We kicked people out. Yeah. We did. Yeah. We walked them. <laughs> so he's in a like a cloak, <laughs> I will call it. So he's wearing like a black fedora. And he's it, all I see is the cloak, right? So it's like the co- so he's in a wheelchair, I'm assuming. He, who well, this? Is, though. Actually, I don't know. Uh, he was so he he was like autonomous right so he's in either like a like a scooter or like a automatic wheelchair Something. i'll say but i couldn't see it because all i could see was the cloak like it's just like a black tent. wow this is sounding scary and then him so it's his head it's his cloak and then he's got a fedora on and he's in and i'm like telling him about the um membership and everything else and the 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 this is the best i never shook his hand because his hands oh, never showed up it was just you just the cloak. reminded me about and the so guy. wait let her oh, go ahead go ahead go ahead <laughs> so but anyway i this is i again can't make it up i've got his like pass his like invitation in my hand i don't know how i got it because again no arms or hand i couldn't see anything it was just the cloak and so he um I'm walking him and I'm like, okay, so you can come back tomorrow night. It's at seven o'clock and everything else. And I'm trying <laughs> to hand him his invitation back, but no arms are out. And so he, t- um, he turns around and he's like, just put it in my hood. And I <laughs> stuck it in like his hood. And then he was on his merry way. And I was Wait, like, did he not have arms? I, I We don't know. Are you still? I don't, I've, I, I don't know. I'm sure he had some because he did. He but come back. All I saw was. No, did you qualify him for purchases? <laughs> <laughs> we're going down in the weeds here. <laughs> Nobody knows what we're talking about. I was I was simply <laughs> I was simply like, let me hand you back your invitation to come back tomorrow. We just had such a good offer. Right. Everybody These wanted to be a part of it. it just put it in my hat. Well. It there just you again, like so many different people showed up and you just really had to go with it. You had to like roll with the punches, like figure out how you're going to communicate with these whoever showed up. Um, So, yeah, that's that's those are a couple of my most memorable. So I like where you went, Jamie. uh, Experiences. You. you, Yeah, you went and we could do probably a whole thing just on that. Your most memorable uh, DB, uh, you know, guest. In the door because I have some, some celebrities. Some, too, some so we won't go into that. <clears throat> local beggar oh, celebrities. Yeah, Not that we need yeah, to name yeah. drop them all right now, but that was always kind of a fun thing, too. Well, I think that um one thing I thought you were going with this, Jamie, is in that process, one of the things that I learned as a sales professional is that you can't judge a book by its cover. And so, of course. We did it. That was kind of a a, a a practice. However, how many times were we surprised someone came in and you just look at them and everybody's like, well, I don't want them. I don't want them. I mean, this is what everybody does in sales in all environments, right? When, you know, some people call it when you have an up. Um, but how many people did not look like, I mean, let's just be real. I mean, they look like they could be homeless and then they ended up dropping six or seven grand on their credit card that night you can't judge a book by its cover and mm-hmm. i thought you know that that's one of the things that um i learned but i know we have a few more minutes and i want to kind of keep this theme of just sharing that 
um, DB Life and, and what it meant for us and what we learned and all of those things. So I'll kind of kick off with, now these are, um, these businesses were franchised. So they were owned usually by families and small company. I think the most employees we probably had in California was, you know, 75 um, or maybe a little more, but wasn't a big company, which really I miss because we were like a family, mm. right? So the owners, when I started at DB in Chicago, there were two owners that were business partners and life partners. Um, that relationship ended and there was a period of time where the owner owned the company by himself. And I learned a lot then because I didn't know any other franchise in the entire network that was only owned and ran by one person. Mm. So I had the opportunity to witness uh, someone running really a two person business by himself. And he was, you know, Mark, Mark did his MBA at Kellogg. Um, this was a middle class you know, white guy, smartest guy I ever met, richest guy I ever met, but, you know, really taught me not just about business, but he taught me about being a decent person. Yeah. He taught me about honesty and integrity. Which is so foundational. We all started so at the company this. when we were in our young 20s, which was very important for all of us to be able to have somebody and a system that we could follow and mentor us through the, those are those early ages or those early years of our business career. Yeah, I would say mentorship, friendship, family. Um, for me, that's kind of what that was. Um, and I don't know about you guys, but for, again, I was 19 years old um, and I didn't know about money. I didn't know about credit. I didn't know about buying a home. I didn't know about any of those things. And I remember the early years of that relationship, um, him just asking me like, what are your dreams? Like, what do you yeah. want to do? And he, he taught me how to make smart goals, how to write goals down. Um, and, and so th those were some of the, uh, beginning years for me and my foundation of our mentorship. Um, you know, I, I don't know about you guys want to share in terms of, the owner of the franchise and what that was like for you guys? I think in Minneapolis, and Jamie maybe agree with this, is that one of the things that we always did and that the owners of our franchise always touted, be a student of self-improvement. Every week we'd have a big launch meeting, and in that meeting we would always have to bring what self-improvement book are you reading t this week and this month? And we'd all go around and just not do a book report, but just share what is the nugget? What is the the point? And so very early on, I mean, I was reading John Maxwell, you know, um, Brian Tracy, like how to win friends and influence people, Dale Carnegie. I mean, just all of these different, very iconic sales books and just gleaning all of this information from that. And I just think even to this day, I always am listening to audiobooks, listening to different podcasts, just for not necessarily shaping one thing or another, but what is the one nugget that you can get out that's going to help you today or help you this week? And I think that what his line was always, you want to be green and growing, not ripe and rotten. You know, and I think that that is, ex mm, yeah, I like right? that, you know, and it's, it, it, I'm, I'm going to text Mark, he didn't have any one-liners <laughs> yeah. like that, but I think though, uh, but, but did, that, I mean, that's it though. Or did you guys, yeah, did you, did you guys um, have any exposure to stuff like that before, like in terms of like self-improvement books, was that something that you knew about or was that first uh, presented to you, you know, by the owners of DB? I think collectively across the the being in school, yes, but not as something that you did as a okay. habit, as a personal, not as had you had to do for a class or something like that. But that was the first time that I had been exposed to, yes, you want to, this should be a part of your daily and weekly routine to incorporate that kind of thing and that kind of positive imaging and messaging into your life for sure. Got it. Jamie, what would you say um, 
was just one of your biggest takeaways in terms of just uh, skills learned or habits over the years of working with the company? Well, I think in general, <clears throat> I agree with what Corlin said. I mean, we worked together, so we had a consistent leader. We had a consistent um, schedule in terms of always having a book that we were reading, always having a sales meeting where we're working on our skills daily, if not, I mean, daily, weekly, monthly. But um, just that, that, like I said before, being that chameleon and being able to adjust my sales technique to any type of person that walked through the door, any type of person that I've encountered. If I, if I had to name one skill set that I learned from direct buy, that's it. That is, I, I can confidently say I can walk into any situation off the cuff and be able to get somebody that's to it. like and trust Building me within like the first 10 or 15 minutes. That's, that's this, that's the skill set that we learned. And I was there for 10 years. So Every single day for 10 years of my life, almost every day for 10 years of my life, I had to be able to connect with someone immediately, get them to like and trust me immediately and not right. in a superficial way. Like I genuinely, I would say like a genuine um, personality trait that we all have, that we all really worked on and honed in on and became experts at is our interest in other people. Like I genuinely was interested in learning more about the person sitting across from me. And I feel that that's still something that I utilize and I very authentically can say I believe in. Like I'm genuinely interested in learning everything I can about the person sitting across from me, no matter what their position, no matter where they come from and at whatever walk of life. Um, and I and I think that that <clears throat> if you got to pick one thing from that position, that that one trait alone or that one skill alone has helped me personally in every other agree. aspect of every career I've had. Yes, I had a mentor. Yes, I love the fact that they were very, um, the the incentives were great. I had that fe family feel. I had a leader. I had someone who taught me my skills, uh, sales skills <clears throat> daily and helped me work on those sales skills. But but that that's it right there. Yeah. Just being interested in people, mm -hmm. being able to develop that like and trust immediately. Yeah. And I like the way you pointed out genuinely being interested because, you know, let's just, let's just be real. Salespeople have a bad rap, right? That, you know, we lie, we, we manipulate, we really don't care. And I think that was really my biggest takeaway. And as throughout the years that I believe that really made us as salespeople stand out is that you don't have to lie, cheat, and steal to be a successful salesperson. Amen. And we had to combat that every day because people came in and they expected that from us. And we had the opportunity to actually help people, to meet new people, and to do it with honesty and integrity. And that was really the biggest gift and skill that I could have ever gotten. And I've carried with me throughout every job that I've ever had after that. So we're right at time, guys. And um, what a great conversation a down a walk down memory lane. Oh, well, hey, that's, uh, you know, I love those. And I rely on the memories of uh, ladies like you guys to kind of keep me straight because I don't remember it all. But I really had a good time doing so. And next time, um, I think just talking about that next cha chapter, right? Like how we got to that next chapter, I'm excited about, um, but until next time, we will see you then. And our website should be up and going. If you want to get your Lead Like a Girl swag, there'll be lots of options for you. Please share, and we look forward to next time. Bye, Bye for now.